Welcome everyone to the post race of the Bet MGM 300 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's been a busy weekend of racing so far here in NASCAR's homeland. Tanner Gray scored his first ARCA win yesterday. Nick Sanchez scored his second truck win, holding off the dominant truck of Corey Heim, who was later disqualified from second after having three with slug nuts. But we're here today, and, um, and for the third race of the weekend, it was Chase Elliott, who scored his first Xfinity win since 2016, returning to Hendrick 17 to victory lane once again. Um, but the biggest story of this weekend in this race was Austin Hill versus Cole Custer. Uh, what happened was one of the final restarts at the end of the race, there were tons of cars on new tires, old tires, scuff tires, all maneuvering. Um, Custer got pinched the wall a little bit in turn four. Um, they kind of door slammed each other on the front stretch. Hill cut a tire down going in turn one. He crashed. Custer was involved in it. And on the back stretch, uh, the two were linked hooked together. And Hill took about, it took about him eight seconds, 10 seconds to succeed. But then he just left rear Custer on the back stretch and the 0 0 hit the outside wall. Hill finished 25th, two laps down. Custer was out of the race. Uh, let's just say the two were not happy with each other at all. Uh, Mark, you got to talk to Austin Hill post-race. What did he have to say? What was his side of the story? He didn't really take ownership and apologize for it. Rather, he said that the way that Custer was racing him, he did not like. He had no problem with Custer beforehand, so he was a little uncertain as to what Custer's motivations were there. But at the same time, he did not apologized for it. He showed no remorse. Okay. He did, however, he did apologize for turning him on the on the back stretch. He said that's probably something I shouldn't have done. But regardless, in terms of the racing, that's something, you know, he wasn't going to apologize for that. Cole Custer, um, it was only a 25-second interview once he got out of the care center when the race ended, and he was hot. He straight up said, Austin Hill tried to kill me on the back stretch. And he did have a, he did he did suffer a pretty hard hit, you know, into the uh, backstretch wall after that after that collision. Um, he also said that <laughs> Austin drove like a pissed off teenager. So a lot of bad blood there. They're first and third in the Xfinity points, and with the championship on the line, things might get heated between the two. Now, as we go into the other stories of the race, um, it was the Cup invasion not only on the track, but also in the broadcast booth. It was, a, it was the annual drivers only broadcast. Josh Berry, Carson Hosevar served as pit reporters. And then you had uh, Brad Kozlowski, Eric Jones in the in the, in the, in the, in the in the Hollywood Hotel. And then you had obviously Blaney, Logano, and, and so on inside the, uh, in, inside, you know, calling the race with Logano serving as the play-by-play -play man. Now, uh, Mark, in the, both after the race and uh, in the uh, bullpen for FL and Cup qualifying, you know, some of the drivers got to talk about their experience today. What did they have to say? They all seem to really enjoy it. They believe that because the CW is taking over the broadcast rights for Xfinity in 2025, this is likely the last year of it. But at the same token, they all enjoyed it. Eric Jones said that he gained a different perspective on realizing that it's not as easy as it looks that it is it's not easy to do in general he credited Logano for sort of leading the play by play and uh, directing kind of directing the traffic between the three and then Austin Sindrick said that he really enjoyed it Sindrick has done some other broadcasting he's done uh, some as the driver analyst for the Arkham Menard series so he said that Kind of this was his last role within the broadcast booth that he had not done and he greatly enjoyed it and Joe uh, Brad Kozlowski's comment was that he enjoyed it as far as the on-track mishaps if you will between Austin Hill and some of the other drivers and that sort of thing Brad's biggest thing was that he was just glad it wasn't him <laughs> indeed um Carson Hosevar, Josh Berry, they also enjoyed being the pit reporters. Carson's, you know, announced in the booth before, but he said it was a different pace, different way, different way to get used to it. Also fun to walk up and down. Uh, he also had praise for Caden Honeycutt, who was one of the fastest trucks in, in his former team at Nice Motorsports at Charlotte in the truck race on Friday, but a late pit stop dropped into seventh. Now on the driver's side, there were plenty of cup drivers that enter, entered. Uh, Chase Elliott ran in the Hendrick 17 and he won the race. Kyle Busch made his first uh, Xfinity start for RCR in the 33. He finished sixth. 
Um, Noah Gregson finished 10th in his return to the Xfinity Series for Rhett Jones Racing. First start for them, great result for them as well. Ty Gibbs won the pole, he finished 9th. Uh, they, the Cup drivers mostly had it covered throughout the day, but JR, Junior Motorsports, they had they put up quite the fight. Sam Mayer led the most laps, Allgaier combined to lead the second most. Allgaier got wrecked out. Chase Elliott at the end, he had an extra set of tires because of um, pit strategy, so he ran away from the field. Let's but not it, forget Allgaier also won both stages too. Yes, definitely. So JRM, you know, they were they were putting it to the cup drivers. They were right there with them every single step of the way. But while Chase Elliott won, it was Brandon Jones second, Sammy Smith third, and Sam Mayer fourth. Much needed good runs for all of them. And, uh, you know, for as many 1.5 mile tracks intermediates, that's, you know, that, that's a huge day for JRM, even if they weren't able to win. Now, before we get to cup qualifying, which happened later, you know, just after the Xfinity race, which is a normally a reversal from having it be before the Xfinity race on Saturdays. Next, the next on track action we'll see is in Indianapolis. Well, hopefully we'll see it because there's potential rain on the way and uh, everyone's, you know, tuning in to see Kyle Larson try and attempt the double. Uh, you know, you talked to you talked to Chase Briscoe's teammate Alex Bowman, plenty of other drivers. You know, gave their thoughts, saying that you know they're excited to see Larson. Um, they're hoping he they're hoping he does well, and it's not surprised to see him do well. Uh, what what? Did, but you talked extensively to them. What did they have to say? What really stood out to me was Chase Briscoe. He was talking about that Larson, a fellow dirt track driver, a fellow sprint car driver that he really pulls for him, and that he is one of the drivers that Briscoe was looking forward to. Briscoe, remember, is from Indiana, so he also enjoys going to the Indy 500. I believe he said he's been to four or five, uh, but he also laughed and said that unless someone wants to do a certain part of the Indy 500, he has no aspirations of doing it. <laughs> yes, you know, obviously, ton there's also tons of Indiana drivers. Justin Haley is also one of them as well. But all of them are, are cheering for Kyle Larson, you know, while he's in Indy. But as Den Denny Hamlin probably put it the best, he said, uh, "I hope he I hope he does well until 6 p.m., which is when the Coke 600 starts tomorrow night." Now for qualifying and practice. Byron spun at the beginning of practice. No harm, no foul there. But Chris Buescher crashed. He will go to the backup car. Tyler Reddick also um, made unapproved adjustments after inspection, so he's he, he qualified in the top 10, but he's at the drop of the rear. Do a pass through. Car chief ejected. Lost a pit selection and so on. While well, the 44 team, uh, NY Racing, they failed three times for, um, before um, before qualifying and will not be able to and did not post a qualifying lap. On the final 10, it was a mix between Hendrick and Gibbs drivers, um, and in the end, it was Ty Gibbs after starting after recording four second place starts in his Cup career. He wins the pole in his 65th, 65th Cup start. He won the pole also today. Um, that 54 team looks stout so far, don't they? They do, and you gotta remember, Gibbs is very good here. He won at Ar the Arca and Xfinity race here in 2021, and he's from Charlotte, and he, is, if there's somebody who could take down maybe the prohibitive favorite or the fan favorite wanting to win the double of Kyle Larson, Gibbs is a very good bet, and you know he's hungry for that first win, second youngest pole win on the Coke 600. He's looking to get that first W and punch his ticket in the playoffs as well. Yes, indeed. Um, we got a reprieve from the Gibbs and Hendrick dominance we've been used to most of the season at North Wilkesboro and Darlington. But um, once again, in qualifying, they're all right up there. Chase Elliott, William Byron. He he, he, he spun in practice and finished and managed to qualify second. Uh, Truex, uh, Larson qualified tenth. Um, now he's flying back to Indy. They were all up there too. But uh, regardless, you know, regardless what happens, it's going to be 400. It's 400 exciting laps, 600 action-packed miles at what has become one of the best tracks in the next-gen car era for the Cup Series. The race today was also crazy. Um, it was, you know, this weekend just so much fun. And tomorrow we get the Christmas of auto racing. I think all of us that are, you know, reporters, but also, you know, love, love, love this all together. We got the Monaco Grand Prix for Formula One. We got the Indy 500. If it can get, if it, if it can, uh, you know, be run, I hope it does. Mother Nature, please stay away. And then we got, we've got the last one, the, the closing act, the Coca-Cola 600. It's the greatest day of the racing year. And we're excited to bring you all from front stretch. We have a team in Indianapolis. Mark and I will be returning to the Coke, the Coke 600 tomorrow. But until then, I'm Steven Stump. He's Mark Crystal. Have a good night and get ready for tomorrow.
Steven Stump of FrontStretch.com here. Come back for more great racing videos, and if you like us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.